Hello friends, this is Shubham and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to use Docker for deployment of one of the ML web application that is Flask web application. And since like many people like you were asking me for deployment video in Docker, like using Docker. So in this video, we will talk only about the implementation of part of it and for understanding more about Docker's and in, like the installation part. Uh, I will make a separate video on that as well. So let's start. Firstly, we have to know why we need Docker. Okay. So if you are working in an industry, then uh, you will probably uh, notice that you will have environments like a develop dev environment, then QA environment, then UAT environment, prod environment. Okay. So let me write them down. So dev environment, QA environment, okay uat that is pre-prod and this is prod environment okay there are different environments involved okay for a software development life cycle so mostly the development part uh, occurs here then this goes to qa for testing okay so if anything more development is required and some bugs are there which will be solved in dev as well um, then after that everything is over then you have to pass it to the uat that is pre-prod so to test that everything goes well uh, before the uh, we transfer the files to prod environment. So that is later part. Let's take only uh, dev and QA into consideration okay, here. So the dev environment has its own configurations like it will have its own OS. It will have its own hardware. Okay, so hardware configurations. So what is hardware configuration? So hardware configuration like RAM. Okay, and hard drive, etc. So these are hardware considerations and QA environment similarly will have its own uh, OS and hardware configurations. So what happens is say we are building a uh, web application in dev environment. Now we have built it and we have transferred it to QA environment okay for testing. So after that uh, what happens is we try we get a lot of complaints from the QA environment uh, saying that this is not working and that is not working but we know that it has perfectly worked in our develop uh, like dev environment okay but uh, due to some reason it is not working in qa so later we can we found out say that uh, we were uh, like running uh, our web application on windows here okay and the operating system on qa was say mac os or say linux different os configuration okay and due to this few libraries were failing or something others were was happening okay this dependency issue so uh, why it happened okay so it is because the the OS you are using in QA it was Mac OS and Linux and probably if you have downloaded any software from internet then uh, you can see that uh, there are different versions of it like if you are installing installing it for Windows installing it for Mac OS or installing it for Linux okay so there are different packages for each and every OS. So similarly, uh, in this also, uh, most probably you'll get an error, okay, that it is not working in this environment because of the uh, non-robustness of this, okay, because it uh, it is running on different OS and different hardware configurations and all. So in this, uh, because of this, uh, we just uh, use a virtual environment somewhere, okay, that uh, if you are using uh, virtual environment, so if you are using virtual environment, what you do is firstly, we go to say we are using AWS for deployment. Okay, first we go to AWS, we will deploy our web application here, then we'll create a virtual environment separately. Okay, and using this uh, so that we don't have any dependency issues, we will use we create a uh, virtual environment and we will install all our dependencies here. Okay, so they can be multiple virtual environments as well. So to go um, uh, one more step higher, so we use Docker here, okay, so that we can deploy this entire Docker to AWS. So what are these benefits? So what happens is, uh, the, we have earlier seen that we are facing some dependency issues because of the OS and hardware configurations in dev were different from that of the QA. So now what happens happened is that we will create a container, okay, and what we will do is now whatever configuration is required in QA environment, we will put it in the Docker container. Like all the configuration that is required here, we will put it in this container. Okay, so this will uh, and this container and actually that is called an image in Docker. Okay, and now this 
image we will transfer this to QA and we will deploy it in QA and the QA people will run it there and can test it easily so this is where docker is very useful also docker is useful because of like resource sharing okay like um, if you have used virtual environments like um, you know vmware or you know other, other from oracle something was there okay if, like virtual machine so what happens is uh, if you create a virtual machine v1 v2 v3 okay this one will have different cpu and ram and hard disk this will have separate and this will have separate okay and now this is sitting in top of the web server okay so we have allocated some resources like cpu ram and hard disk to each virtual machines now problem is that resources allocated to v1 will only be used by v1 and v1 if say v1 stops working okay v1 uh, now we cannot use the all the resources that were used in v1 in v2 or v3 we cannot use that okay uh, in virtual machines so this problem of resource sharing is also enabled in dockers so this uh, the docker maintains this with the help of a concept called virtualization so let's jump off to the code and on the way i will be explaining you like uh, each and every details of it okay so let's jump off to the code directly So as you can see that this is the folder structure and inside this we can find files like app.py then this is the IP and ipython notebook this is the pickle file okay these are the three things that we require here so what we are doing is this is the flask application here if you see the code um, right so here we are just loading this model okay this uh, that pickle file which i have showed you before here this is the pickle file we are loading here and then we are taking input from the front end like we have built a html file as well from where you will be inputting your uh, details and we'll just uh, accept the details in here and we'll be predicting it with using our pickled model okay here as you can see here so let's run this code and show it to you that it is working or not cd desktop cd ipo cd files okay so we'll do a python app.py okay so it has started running and running on port 8080 and we'll just paste it here as you can see that is working fine okay so just put the details here which will be caught in app.py and it will help in predicting and it will show you the prediction score so this is simple and but we don't want this like this is running on a local host so we want to dockerize it okay so for dockerizing it we have few steps that you have to follow so this is a docker file that we have to create in order to dockerize our ml flask application okay so what are the steps so these are like for, from copy expose work directory run and command so what are these steps okay so i'll be explaining you each and every one of them so from is like it uh, initializes a new build stage and sets the base image for subsequent instruction like uh, in our case it will be anaconda that is continuum ios like continuum io sorry so uh, this is the like the base os taken okay then the come uh, there comes is a copy so your copy dot then usr slash app slash so what is this so dot is like you are copying everything from that folder firstly uh, to run the docker you have to uh, do a cd to that folder where you have kept all the files okay so you have, you have to copy all the files from there to the docker container okay it is same okay if you are deploying it to the aws or any cloud what you're doing is you are just sending or uh, doing a secure copy from your local host like from your local system to the cloud then you are deploying it there 
in the same way you are doing a copy from your local uh, directory to a folder structure uh, where it is user then slash then uh, slash app then slash okay there so most probably that is the uh, the work directory you will be providing okay this is inside the docker container next step is the expose so this is the port number that you are exposing okay so if you are like having some port like 8080 or 8000 which is already uh, occupied then you have to provide some other port number so i have provided 5000 here work directory is the work directory that you have provided here like you have transferred all the files from your local directory to user app okay so here also you are uh, doing the same you are mentioning that uh, my current work directory will be this one in docker container then you is the run like you if you want to run some requirement.txt okay in requirement.txt you have to put all the dependencies that you want to install in a docker container so it does do a pip install minus r recursively it will install all of it okay then there will be C, uh, cmd like the command so using this you have to mention python app.py the name of the flask application here okay so uh, this is all about the docker file this is just a file without any extension okay so you have to create this one so next i will show you how to do this okay so let's go to the terminal okay so we'll be stopping this okay doing a clear so since we are already inside this so we all can see that we have a docker file here which i have just opened it okay so this is it so next what we'll do is we'll do a docker ts so it shows that there is no container here okay since the docker is empty we have not created any container here if you go to a uh, docker desktop application you can see that uh, this is like already deleted and it's not working it is exited okay so we can delete this as well so there is no containers here no containers running uh, we can come back to this uh, docker applications after we have uh, run a container okay so let's start so what we'll do is uh, there are a few steps that you need to follow there is a build step and there is a run step okay so what is build you are building the image using that so it is like a docker image is a private file system and just for your container so it provides all the files and code your container needs to run okay so the simple command is docker build minus t and just the name of the api say shubham ipl okay and dot so uh, you are like taking all the files and in that uh, folder system folder local folder and you are building an image out of that okay so let's do this so here you can see that uh, it will take some time and it is running all those uh, things you have written in your docker file okay the copy expose work directory run and command and also it has it will take some time in your system because uh, i have already installed all the things in requirement.txt it will install in your system as well so it will take some time okay so next what you are going to do is we are going to run the docker okay the docker container so after transferring all the files like uh, you have copied all the files here okay to your docker container now we have to run the docker container we have to since it is deployed so we will do a simple command called docker run minus p okay then we say i do a 8080 and see if the port is free or not okay and we'll give the uh, name okay that we have provided to our api so ipl so you can wait for a minute and let's see if it works yes it is successfully running okay here you can see that you have got the url same as if you run on a local host okay so here you get this and if you do a refresh here no need to refresh just put this here and do this here you can see that you have successfully deployed it in your docker okay and it is running fine just select something okay and predict this code so we'll get a prediction like this so that is pretty well this is not in our domain so we will we are just working on docker and how to deployment part of it okay we are seeing that in, in this video so we have successfully done that and if you want to know more about like um, what is docker run command okay see here the docker run this part of it okay so this docker run 
and this is 8080 uh, colon 8080 so what is that so this is your mapping your local host port okay that is a your machine this is the port of your machine to the port of the container okay this, this is the port of your container so here you are doing that okay and this is the image that the name of the image that you have given here okay so that is the name you have to provide here okay and also this is a command to run, run the docker so since it is running so let me open another terminal and show you something else okay you do this and do a docker ps here you can see that I have run this okay Shubham IPL here right now and you can see this it is running state okay and if you open your docker desktop app also you can see here the Shubham IPL is running so here you can see okay that like you will get the logs of whatever like the command you have provided okay here like we txt and all the work that we expose etc so you can see everything here you can monitor it in your doc desktop application and yeah i think that's it for this video actually so if you want uh, like a brief video on like what is docker and um, some more information about it so please write down in your comments like uh, like the suggestions that you want um, like to give me to uh, for, so that i can make other further videos as well so most probably uh, I'll be making another video on installation part like it is different for Windows user different for other uh, OS um, as well so in Windows like I have done um, this is the part I would like to show you like um, I have just copy pasted this into a you know uh, like into the browser to run this okay uh, so in Windows most probably you will not get this URL you will have to give provide the URL of the docker so it is like one and two dot 168 dot something something so okay so you have to provide that url uh, in your uh, and if you have got some endpoints in your flask api then you have to provide that you api sorry sorry that uh, url then slash the port number then you have to uh, not slash it is colon port number then slash you have to put the endpoints name so in windows it is a little, little different and you will have a separate terminal for docker as well so in Mac or Linux, I think it is working in the single terminal itself. So yeah, that's uh, all for this video. And if you like this, please share this video. Keep, don't keep the information to your itself, to yourself and share it among your friends so that they can take the advantage of this. And containerization using Docker is uh, really awesome one. And also it solves a lot of dependency issues. And I have like personally, I have used Docker's and I have got least complaint from the QA team as well. <laughs> So, um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, please like, comment your suggestions and most importantly, share this video as much as you can. Thank you. Bye-bye.